Hey guys, as I reflect back on my life, I think of the mistakes I made as a parent. I did some great things. I hit some home runs. I also hit some foul balls. I also whiffed a few balls coming by. So join us today as I share some mistakes I've made as a good dad and other mistakes I've seen other good dads make. Men in the Arena Army, we salute you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. This is Equipping Men in 10. I'm Jim Ramos, your host and guide of Spotify's number one podcast for Christian men, helping you become your best version in the stress bubble of life, 28 to 50 and beyond. With that time when you're raising kids, that is called the stress bubble. So guys, I want to jump into the meat of the podcast. These are five mistakes that good dads make. So these aren't five mistakes that amps and and dads make. These aren't five mistakes that bad dads make. These are five mistakes that good dads make that I think really hurt their parenting. So I've given each of these five guys a title. So the first one, so we're going to go five down to one. So number five is what I call the rubber band man. No, that's not a song from the 70s. The rubber band man is the guy who disengages from his sons and daughters when they become teenagers. They disengage from their daughters when they began to reach puberty. They feel like hugging them and is inappropriate. They distance themselves because they're afraid in our culture that is uh, highly litigated that something will happen or somebody will misconstrue their affection. And I say, don't do that. Your daughters need your affection. They need you to teach them uh, the appropriate and healthy affection and that she is worthy uh, of pursuit and of honor. She needs you and your sons need you as well. Your sons, your sons during their teen years will begin to distance themselves. They will begin to position themselves against you on some level. And it is your job to engage. So when I say rubber band, man, I say give your kids distance but only so much, and then you pull and you close that gap so that you can father them the way they need. They may not want it, but they need it. But you don't want to go too far. If you go too far, you become dad number four. Dad number four is the bulldozer dad. This is a term that we've just been uh, hearing about in the last 10 years. This is a guy, a dad, the bulldozer knocks down all obstacles. The good dad who is a bulldozer knocks down all the obstacles in their kid's way. And this is dangerous. It's dangerous when you never let your kid fail. It's dangerous when you never let them suffer the natural consequences of their actions. It's dangerous when you defend their behavior at school, even though it was negative. We need to allow our children to suffer the consequences, the natural consequences of their choices, good or bad. The bulldozer dad does not let their children work for their stuff. They're just handing their children stuff, creating an entitlement generation, a resignation generation, not letting your children choose their own pathway. It's important, dads, that we let our children choose. And again, it comes back to consequences. And the other thing is this, not letting them contribute to the household. Saying stupid stuff like, oh, your job is school. No, you live in my house and you will pay rent here. And that rent comes in the form of you doing chores. So when dads knock down all these obstacles, uh, it it creates exhausted parents because somebody's got to carry the slack, and it creates a a child who's spoiled, rotten, and entitled. And so that is thanks to the bulldozer dad. The number three dad is what I call the kid's first dad. You know, I walked into a meeting, a small group of men, Christian men, getting ready to launch a small group ministry where they were all the leaders. And one of those men was bragging to the other men saying, I just told my third wife that my kids are more important than her. And if she doesn't like it, she can get out. Well, a couple. Th- so I jumped in. I said, hey, bro, you've been married three times. So you're not an expert on marriage. So, and you've just given your wife an ult- your third wife an ultimatum that she can get out. The problem that you have, bro, is that you are living with a non-biblical perspective of marriage. Your kids do not come before your wife. Your wife comes before your kids. If you want to be a biblical man, if you want to be a biblically masculine man, your wife is the most important person on the planet. Your kids come after her, after her. Your family, your nuclear family does not revolve around your children. It revolves around Jesus, and then your wife is like the moon revolving around Jesus. It's she is she is second to your relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's the number three, the kid's first dad. The second biggest mistake that good dads make is what I call the working dad. 
The working dad believes the lie that all his kids kids need from him is his financial provision, his resource provision. So he goes to work, he grinds it out. He's a workaholic because he's got to provide more and more for his kids. And if he just provides the resource support of his kids, shelter, food, clothing, if he does that and his wife does everything else, they're good to go. And I would just say that that is not true. That is a, a lie, and that is not biblical. Your job is to provide security for your children. Your job is to provide emotional health for your children. Your job is to provide financially for them. Your job is to provide affirmation for your children. Your job is to provide value to your children. You have so many things that you need to provide beyond the scope of work. In fact, your work will have to be sacrificed to provide some of these other things like going to your kids' games to affirm your love for them, uh, um, sitting down once a day and having a meal with them. They need you to provide way beyond your financial goals. The number one biggest mistakes that good dads make, and this is the mistake I made as a good dad. So I, I've been paid all my life to be a Christian. I'm a professional ministry guy, and so I'm paid to do Christian things, unlike many of you listening. So when that happens, it leads itself to some other potential issues. And the issue for me was, now I modeled my faith, I modeled my service, I modeled everything that I needed to model, but I failed in some areas, and here are the areas. I mean, I've got phenomenal sons. But I'm saying that if I look back on my life where I failed, I failed in a couple areas. But let me just lay this out for you. So first of all, Dad, the religious dad does not model a life of worship. I did this well. I, I was in church. I would engage in worship. I was very consistent in worship. And I think that's important, being consistent in worship, being engaged in worship, letting your children see you pay homage to your creator in a worship setting, a corporate worship setting is critical. Uh, it's important that my kids see and experience my faithfulness in giving. That, And this is where I did not show my kids the giving. I would write the checks or send the checks in. And I think that was a mistake looking back. What I need to do and what I think you should do is every time you give that your kids see the check, they see the money, they feel that money slipping out of their fingers, that, that it's not going to their new, uh, their new uh, football cleats. It's not going to their new musical instrument, but that money's going to God first. And they need to feel the weight of your giving. The third thing is in serving others. They need to model, they need to see you modeling serving people in the name of Jesus. They need to see you sharing your faith, that you're so excited about Jesus that your faith is not going to be on the defensive, but it's going to be on the offensive. They need to see you sharing. One time we uh, wanted to express our love for our server at Christmas time. We gave her a hundred percent tip. You know, my kids still talk about that. You know, modeling, uh, sharing your faith with others in some way or the other. The other thing that we need to do as dads is to share the stories of God's goodness. I wish I would have shared more about what God was doing in me and speaking to me. You know, God speaks to me all the time. I carry these notepads around. I fill up about one every two weeks of the things that God says to me in prayer. I wish I would have shared more of that with my sons. It wasn't until they were adults and we launched Men in the Arena, they saw the struggle and they saw the provision and they saw the blessing. And that is really what changes us. It's not it's not the rules and regulations. It's what, having our children see God dynamically working in us. And the last thing I will say is I is we need to our kids need to see us uh, in showing biblical hospitality. Remember that word is in the Greek is philo, love, xenia, strangers, loving strangers. We need to be the dads pulling over and helping somebody on the side of the road, picking up a hitchhiker, handing somebody a hamburger who who is hungry, you know, you know, find you know finding ways to serve those people that we do not know. So those are the top things that I have seen good dads fail at, the rubber band dad not engaging, the bulldozer dad knocking down problems, the kid's first dad loving the kids, putting them as a priority of her mom, the working dad who's a workaholic to provide, and that's really all he's doing, and the religious dad who's, who's going through religious workings and mantras, but he's not helping his kids uh, deal with the ex uh, helping his kids experience Jesus on a personal level. Guys, I hope this episode helped you today. If it did and you like this episode, please text this link to one of your buddies so he can benefit from the ministry that we're offering to men and helping them become the best version of themselves in the stress bubble of life and in Christ. Until next time, feel the wet sand on the arena floor. 
hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out and be a man.